Hello and welcome in the next video. Today I will be reviewing probably the most popular Bambula printer, the A1. It's positioned somewhere between A1 Mini and P1P in the Bambulab offer. I've had it for half a year now and printed around 500 hours on it, so in this video I will share how it holds up midterm and if it's worth buying. Let's start with the specs. The build volume is 256mm in all three dimensions, what's the same as P1P, P1S and X1C. It also has a direct drive extruder, up to 500mm per second print speed, 10,000mm per second acceleration, automatic bed leveling, input shaping, and it currently costs just $339. You can also buy it with AMS light you need for multicolor printing. Let's begin with what's great about this printer. First of all, the price to print quality, quality ratio. It costs less than P1P and prints just as good. It handles PLA and PETG with no issues and the input shaping really helps to get sharp corners and clean walls, even at higher speeds. There is just the same problem as with A1 Mini. It's a bad slinger, so on tall prints you will see the artifacts caused by vibrations. Next advantage is also the same as for A1 Mini, the ease of use. It has the same quick swap nozzle system, which is great. It takes less than a minute and no tools are required. It's so much easier and better than on P and X series. You also get here fully automatic bed leveling, which just works, and automatic flow calibration. And both of those features combined really makes life easier. Exactly same as for A1 Mini. For some reason bed leveling worked for me much better here than on A1 Mini. On the smaller brother I had failed prints from time to time due to inconsistent first layer. Here so far it didn't happen. The printer combined with Bamboo Studio, the mobile app and the cloud support, it's almost plug and play. There is some assembly required though, but not much and the instruction is very clear, so even inexperienced users won't have a problem. The Bamboo Slicer has presets for almost all materials and all is well optimized, so it just works. User interface is also an upgrade versus P1P and P1S. A1 got a nice colorful touch screen with very intuitive and easy to use menu. On P1P I ended up controlling the printer mostly from the phone app and here it goes quicker to just use the touch screen, so I like it. It's also worth mentioning the AMS light. I don't have one, but of what I've heard from other users it works well. I prefer the regular AMS for P and X series, but from the other side, for price of naked P1P, you can get A1 with AMS Lite, so it's a good deal. Now let's move to the drawbacks. The print quality on taller models can suffer a bit. Since it's a bad slinger, Tall prints can sometimes show a bit of Z-wobble or ghosting. It's hard to avoid with heavy bed moving so quickly, but you can slow down the speed and accelerations to minimize the problem. Corex Y printers are delivering better results, but A1 is still handling that surprisingly well, so it's not a deal breaker. Also the printer is not enclosed, so you are mostly limited to PLA, PETG, and TPU. It's not designed to handle high temp materials like ABS, ASA or nylon. The P1P is not enclosed as well, but you can add the enclosure yourself or buy the official kit. But with A1 you are basically stuck with what you have. As mentioned earlier, the AMS Lite is a nice addition, but it has limitations. Since the regular spools don't sit on the rollers as in regular AMS, it's designed to hold the original bamboo lab filaments. Other spools might fit as well, but in many cases you will need to print some adapter to use third-party spools here. 
last disadvantage is the size of the printer. Having the same print volume as P1P, the A1 takes more space because of its construction. You also need to reserve more space on the back and front of the printer because of moving bed. For some of you it won't be a problem and some of you might have limited space and in that case P1P is more compact printer. Now let's go to the score. Like always I will rate the printer in five categories. Print quality, first layer, user experience, features and price. H with a max of 10 points. So print quality, 7.5 out of 10. In general it prints as good as Bambula P1P and P1S, what's pretty shocking in itself, but there are drawbacks for the higher prints, therefore it lost a half point to P1P. First layer, 8 out of 10. Auto bed leveling is working really well, and I didn't encounter the same problems as on A1 Mini. It works as good as on P1P, therefore the same score. User experience, 9 out of 10. It's basically same printer as A1 Mini, just bigger, therefore same score. It has a touch screen with really nice and intuitive layout, the Bamboo Studio slicer is well optimized, phone app and maker word library are all integrated into the ecosystem really nicely. Nozzle changing is really quick and easy. Probably the most beginner friendly printer I've tested. Features 7 out of 10. A1 has an input shaping, automatic flow calibration, camera, LED light, Wi-Fi, AMS light support and quick swap nozzle system. It's just missing the capability to print more demanding materials. Finally price, 8 out of 10. At $339 it's significantly cheaper than P1P or P1S and you are getting the same build volume and some upgraded features. It's a lot of 3D printer for the money and that includes both hardware and software. It's really good middle spot between smaller A1 mini and pricier P1P or P1S. You are sacrificing here the ability to print more demanding materials because of lack of enclosure, but if you are printing only PLA, PETG and TPU, it's a really good deal, since for the price of P1P you can get A1 with AMS. To sum it up, it's a perfect machine for the first 3D printer. Print quality is excellent, price is much lower than for its enclosed brothers, and it's really user friendly. There are drawbacks due to this being a bed slinger with no enclosure, but that's not always a must have for everyone. I personally still prefer P1P due to being more compact and having the core XY construction, but I definitely see a large market for A1 as the better option. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you own this printer or if you are considering buying it. Consider leaving a like and subscription to help the channel to grow and thank you for watching, see you in the next one.